One of the keys to being a good golfer is good ball striking. With good ball striking comes consistency and distance control, which is imperative for you to get good at golf. Hi everyone, my name's James Robinson. Welcome back to Get Good at Golf on this channel. We're gonna help you get good at golf one day at a time. So we're gonna talk ball striking today. I didn't realize how far away these balls are. I'll have a quick walk to them and we're gonna talk irons because so many people often have a tendency to think, right, if I'm gonna hit an iron, I've got 150 yards here, I've got an eight iron and the shot that I want to play is a really nice high shot like that. You can see it can come off. That might just miss the green left as I've rotated the face too much, but it's not gone the distance I want. If Chris can see that, that is front left of the green, from 150 yards, that's not a terrible shot. That's not going to ruin your round. But if you do that consistently, you are robbing yourself of distance. You are robbing yourself of accuracy and of lower scores. So what can I change to do that? You'll see there was minimal ground interaction there. There was a slight divot, but nothing major because what I've essentially done there is returned too much dynamic loft to that ball. So how do I reduce that? And how will that help me improve my ball striking, help me hit straighter golf shots, which ultimately most people do want. In fact, no, ultimately everybody wants, even tour players do try to hit pretty straight shots with a little bit of movement on. That's gonna come down to the relationship between the club face and the swing path, which we'll talk to you about in a later video. So make sure you subscribe if you want to see that. So essentially what I want to do is make sure First of all, the ball position is not only correct, but is consistent. So with a mid iron, like an eight iron here, I'm gonna have it just forward of center in my stance. You can use an alignment stick or another golf club just to check that visually so you can see where that is. It's a really good way of making sure that stays nice and consistent. If you are a driving range goer, if you do like practicing, make sure you put something down to help you with that because it has to stay consistent. If you look at the driving range this week on the US PGA Major Championship, you will see so many alignment sticks, you'll see so many golf clubs down, you'll see rulers and protractors and all sorts of stuff that help people, even the best players in the world, remain consistent with their ball position and with stance width. So you might have seen on that first shot, my stance was a little bit wide, so that's restricted me from moving my weight back and through. So essentially, I want a nice shoulder width apart motion here so that I can load up to the top of the backswing from there. I can transfer the weight into my left side. I can rotate down. And because I know where that ball position is every time, I can then think about where the low point is in relation to that golf ball. So with an eight iron, I want the low point just after the ball. I want to take a nice little divot. I want to hit down on it slightly. And I also want to have a little bit of forward shaft lean. If we get a little bit of forward shaft lean, I know that dynamically I am taking loft off that club and I'm also stopping myself rotating the club too much. I mentioned earlier that first shot went a little bit left. That is because if I do release the club too early and I have that wide stance, you'll see that generally the club starts moving a lot. So I have to manipulate the golf club in order to get the ball to go where I want it to go, as opposed to just having a little bit of forward shaft lean and making sure those hips move out the way. You can see there's very little rotation of that club face there. And if the club is traveling down into the ball, I am ultimately in control of that golf ball as soon as I hit it. So if I hit you another shot here from 150 yards, you'll see this should come out a little bit lower. It shouldn't have as much movement on it. And that is now working nicely towards that flag. And you'll see I've taken a much bigger divot there through the ball as well. So ultimately by hitting down on that golf ball, by getting the club in the right position and by having the correct setup, I am making sure that I can hit much better, much more consistent golf shots, attack these flags and hopefully lower my scores. Guys, Chris is now gonna give us a drill to help with this. And that's another one. I really need to start doing what I tell you guys to do. Oh. So as always, great points there from James. We've covered obviously stance width. We've then covered making sure we can turn into that golf ball. So we now need to think about how far we stand from a ball because that's another thing that we see. So what encourages to get the ball clean is if I'm stood too far away, a lot of times people fall towards it and we return with a lot of dynamic loft. I'm stood up like a pencil. We're not putting any real pressure on there. So once we've got our stance width, shoulder width apart, we've got the ball position consistent like James mentioned. From there, now we want to think about how far we are away from the ball. And a good reference is from your 
thumb to your pinky to the butt end of the club. From here, my arms should hang naturally and just straight down. You'll see they're not out here, they're not straight, they're also not between my legs where we start to see people picking that club up. Oh, I'm making more of a, an axe motion, not a golf swing. So let's get the right distance from the golf ball because then that's going to allow us to stay in our angles, make sure we can turn and get into that position there. But what is then the biggest fault we see through the golf ball? And that's what we see from the Everyday Golf from my channel, Mr. Dave Harrison. We start to see this arm wanting to work off. Once this arm starts to work off, we have to release that club head. So we have a lot of motion where that comes off. We then throw the hands at it. We might fat the ball, we might thin the ball. We are not getting the desired strike. We're also mainly not getting the desired distance. You're robbing yourself of distance and that's not what we want to do if we're trying to lower our handicaps. So what I want you to do is a bit of a drill that you can do on the driving range. Like James said, we want to see alignment sticks down. Like James said, we want to see alignment sticks down on the ground, whether it's for your aim or for ball position or for both. Again, you can use the spare clubs in your golf bag, but once we've got that, I want you to start to feel that we're going to be working on this lead arm. So if you're a right-handed golfer, your left arm. And what I want you to do is start hitting some shots where you're feeling, and you'll have seen somebody like Tommy Fleetwood do this. In his finish, we have the arms very much extended and we're out in this position. We don't see Tommy Fleetwood finishing his golf swing like this. Well, I hope we don't anyway. So, we want to do that on the driving range. Get a real good feel of, right, this left arm wants to stay nice and straight in the backswing, and then on the way through, we repeat that. The right arm is then going to be straight out. We're going to have that little bit of fold because we do have to get rotation, but it's not rotation from the hands. It's rotation from this forearm. You'll see that this will start to twist and turn, and that will square the club face up. We'll get into a strong position there, and from there, it will start to fold, and this right arm will now be parallel to the ground. Now when you start hitting shots where we're getting into that kind of finish here, this might not reach the green for me, but again on the driving range, we just want to set a target and start to see that I'm really focusing on that finish, extending myself out. And if James comes around there, you'll see that the right arm is par Oh, again! He's, he's parallel to so the So close. Sorry, I was, I, was, I, James, I was tracking the ball. James did mention that I might get a hole in one. I was close yesterday. But through there, nice and easy, that right arm was parallel to the ground and it still got the distance. And why did it get the distance? That's because I was able then to get this club in with a little bit of forward shaft lean. The club face was nice and square to my target. And as we saw, even with that shotgun or Sean off finish, we can see it still reached the target, yeah? So in your practice swings, really get a feel of right, okay, I'm really feeling like it's wide here, this left arm is parallel, and on the way through, stopping with a turn body, but this right arm parallel. Let's see if we can do that again. Good stance, good ball position, and make sure we focus on that finish. So a nice ball flight, right arm nice and straight, left arm connected. And those are two shots from here that we would certainly take. Well inside tour average, good strikes, a good consistent ball flight. And if you can do that drill on your driving range, get everything set up, do your ball position, do your stance width, focus on your finish, we're going to help you get good at golf.